Hi guys, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this video is going to be about e.l.f. I got some new things from the website. I feel like quite a few new things came out at the start of the year, so I have jumped on a number of those, and then I thought, well, let's just make it a full e.l.f. face, because sometimes it's fun to just talk about the brand in general, bring back perhaps some items that we haven't used in a while from e.l.f., and just have that whole conversation. And I will say, right off the bat here, I feel like e.l.f. is kind of losing a little bit of its charm for me because, I mean, I'm of the era where I really remember this stuff all being a dollar, and then when they kind of expanded and some things were three dollars, it was kind of like, okay, this is acceptable, I still don't care. It still pales in comparison to the price of a lot of other drugstore things, and now I feel like they've just really, you know, gotten right in there with all the other drugstore brands. Prices are just going up everywhere. Not every single item in the line has done that, but it really seems like when a new thing comes out from e.l.f. these days, I'm not having that experience anymore where it's like, oh, this is so cheap. I can't believe, you know, how are they getting away with selling it at this price? The stuff's coming out at a higher price. That's just how it is. So I'm joining you today. I've got absolutely nothing on my face because some of these things that I got are skincare steps. So Holy Hydration. I love the Holy Hydration line. Um, a kitten just got there. Okay. As I was saying, I love Holy Hydration. I use that cream every night. And when I saw that they now have a Holy Hydration Serum, it's the Triple Bound Serum with 1.7% multi-weight hyaluronic acid. To explain that, it says three molecular weights of hyaluronic acid, ultra low, low, and high, deliver the ultimate boost of hydration and reveal fresh, plump skin. So you're supposed to put this on clean skin, and I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna just use this as my morning serum, even though you know, I may put this in with my night routine, realistically, because I've kind of got... Oh, that feels really good. Actually quite hydrating instead of just immediately sinking in. But I do like using my three Glossier serums in the morning, which one of them is a hyaluronic acid serum. But I could see me using this at night and maybe pairing it with my advanced night repair. The kitten's like, the background is less exciting. I need to make myself part of it. So that feels really nice. I got that in the full size. And then something I already had on hand is one of these Holy Hydration face creams. This happens to be the one with SPF, although we're going to be using an SPF as well that I got from e.l.f., the new one they put out. So I'm just gonna blend this in real quick. Anybody else feel like the SPF version of this feels slightly less rich than the regular? Or maybe is it because I have a makeup fridge downstairs? I got a new makeup fridge. <laughs> and, um, oh, hello. Hello there. And it causes the texture of my moisturizer to be even thicker. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, we're moisturized now. I am going to put a little bit of my vanity cream on. It does not come in a jar like this. I just have my giant tub of it, and I put some in a little empty Bobbi Brown jar. And I love using this on the eye area. It's just so luxurious feeling, honestly. And if you're new here, I've had some kind of dry patches around my inner part of my eye, and this has just totally said, no problem, I can handle that. Now we're ready to go into the sunscreen, and this is funny, guys. Um, I saw they had a new SPF um, called Woe Glow SPF 30, and it's a sunscreen, but they call it a makeup primer as well, because I guess it has a little bit of a glow to it. And I thought, you know what? They, it's available in a mini. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the mini just to try it. I think it's gonna probably give me a good sense of how I feel about this product. I assumed it was going to be a pretty good size mini because they are charging five bucks for it. And this is the mini. <laughs> like it's, it's really mini. I don't know. I thought it was going to be bigger than that. <laughs> Full size is $14, but whatevs. Okay, Elf. This looks like kind of almost buttery in, in tone, but you put it on the skin and I noticed this as I was like swatching it out on my hands last night. You can see some real glow in this. It's really pretty on the skin, actually. Wow. Oh, that's nice. I feel like I just added quite a bit of hydration. A little bit of glow. That's nice. I, I enjoy that. Okay, and then I got another mini because, you know, I'm going to take advantage of minis when I can because I don't use up a lot of products very fast trying lots of different things. And this was also a $5 mini. It's their new um, Power Grip Primer, but this one has the 4% niacinamide in it. And it says on the box it can help even skin tone. And I really wanted to try it to see if it was 
just as sticky as the original version because that's kind of turned me off from the original power grip is just how like it it has a pull like a drag across the face it's sticky and I feel like I have to use a whole lot of it to make it even somewhat spreadable across the skin. I know tons of people love it, but I thought maybe they improved the consistency with this a little bit. So while I know this is said to be last step before makeup, I'm gonna go ahead and try this out. You know? It's still sticky. It's close to the same as the original, but maybe just a slight bit more glide. But you know, you're gonna, that does kind of come with the territory of a gripping primer. However, I feel like the Hard Candy 12-hour makeup grip truly delivers on the long wear claims, and it does not have that drag. All right, Elf, I'll use your little $5 sample sizes. It just kills me. Like, they would have been selling back in the day, like this stuff would have been a buck. I know they've stepped up ingredients and they're probably improving as a whole as a brand, but it was just a part of the line where, yeah, I like that about e.l.f. and now it just ain't that way anymore. Times are changing. For foundation today, I was going back and forth about whether I'd use the CC cream or just the regular foundation. And it's been longer since I've used this, which is just the Flawless, I think it's called Flawless Finish Foundation, right? Flawless Satin Foundation, which does sell for $6, which I will say, this is kind of an old dog and elf's line at this point in time and that's definitely cheap compared to other drugstore items. Um, I have it in the shade Sand. I do really like the CC cream by the way. Neither that nor this is a new product to me. The CC cream has some really good coverage and I've done full reviews and other looks with it but I'm gonna do most of a pump of this Sand and dab it around and try to bring back our, our memory on what this does exactly. This is one where I've had it. I had it a long time ago when it was a newer product and I have repurchased it. Dabbing it in, that looks really pretty on the surface of the skin actually. Maybe it's all the priming steps that I've got on, but there's a nice little easy glow coming off the skin right now. The shade looks really perfect. $6 really is a great price for a foundation. We're talking around about the same price as Wet n Wild, Photo Focus, Rimmel Stay Matte, and stuff like that. It has a bit of a smell that's not bad, but not amazing, but it looks gorgeous on, and I can see kind of the glow that it has. I wouldn't say it's full coverage, but I would call it a strong medium coverage. Like I said, the shade match is really good for me. I could get into using that again. Yeah, I really dig that, and the skin feels nice and hydrated as well, given the products I have underneath. You know, we were well moisturized. We had the serum, the moisturizer, the two different primers. Oh, and in classic e.l.f. form, as soon as I got my current haul in, I see they've put out a new collection called Good Vibes Only. <laughs> So I missed out on that. Pretty sure that's limited edition. But I noticed they had out these color correctors and these are being sold on Ulta as well. Um, I got, it's called Camo Color Corrector and I went with like the lightest shade of peach. And it looks like these are available in some really vivid shades. This isn't just for like brightening. This is for actually helping to undo discoloration. So there is a deeper like orangey color that's just called orange and this is the one called peach. There's a yellow, a green, and actually a what seems to be a very intense looking blue. So they're all meant to color correct. Let's look at the texture of this a little bit. It feels, I would say, maybe a little thinner than the texture of regular camo concealer. But let's use that on some darkness here. Got a little darkness there, yep. And something I love from e.l.f., their double-ended brush. Now keep in mind, this is color correcting. It's not gonna correct like the contours of your face where maybe like you've lost some volume around the eye area and it's dipping in a little bit there, but I'm paying attention to like maybe the bluishness that exists right in here and seeing if I can like brighten that up a little bit. This also would have been handy when I was dealing with a lot of melasma, like right out here on my cheek area. It would have been nice to see how this tackled that kind of a dark spot. But the idea is that you put something like this on and then you kind of layer a regular concealer over it and this stuff has done the hard work of correcting the darkness, which I think it did. 
kind of do some of that. I didn't have terribly dark like blue tone under eyes, but I have a little bit of that right in the innermost corner. And I feel like it kind of worked on that a little bit. Yeah, they talk about in the description layering underneath foundations and concealers, long lasting increased resistant full coverage with a satin finish infused with hyaluronic acid. So I'm going to layer it with um, a concealer that I used in the past that I wasn't thrilled with, but I repurchased it because I thought I want to give it another try because a lot of people have said um, this is actually really similar to the YSL, the Touche Eclat. Um, I got Light 23C in this Flawless Brightening Concealer. It's a little click pen design. So I've played with this a little bit, but I'm going to add some to my look here. I do not love products where you've got to click up through a brush. I'm just not a huge fan of that application style. I think because sometimes, especially if you haven't used a product in a while, it doesn't immediately click and things are kind of cloggy and stuff and I just don't like that. Okay, I've applied a little bit. I feel like it was a fairly light amount. I'm gonna try to spread it around. So we did our color correct and now we get our brightening. Actually, I think it's doing pretty well. Now, the color corrector did do some of the legwork. I do feel like it's brightening. It's not adding a real heavy look, you know? I would have to say skin is looking pretty darn good right now. Okay, Elf. All right. For powder, I've had this on hand for a bit, and I really do like it. The Halo Glow Setting Powder in the light pink shade. Now, Elf also does have this little guy. Remember when this was so hot and everybody was, like, trying to get their hands on this, but it was sold out? Um, you could get that, but frankly, since that time, getting these Amazon ones that are a little bit flatter, um, I do feel like they reach, like, inner corners of the eye even better, and I think that's something worth going for actually just get you a six pack of those um, probably for the same price that it would cost for one elf puff sometimes I mistakenly call these sponges but they're puffs so I get a little bit of my pink tone powder out into my little lid there and yeah this works really well maintaining brightness girls have their first cheerleading competition coming up at the end of this month and y'all, it's it's a big deal. I've been given a palette. Well, I wasn't given, I bought it. But there's like a special eyeshadow palette to use. There are special lip colors. There's hair pieces to put in. Frankly, I think the hair piece will ultimately make my life less stressful. But like, we're talking some full, full glam. I find myself wondering how are all these little kids gonna recognize each other on competition day? Like, wait, who are you? We're in that purple smoky eye. Like, what's going on? Okay, so I've dabbed this in and I feel set and brightened where I wanna feel set and brightened, I think. Patting a little bit around here too because, I mean, the skin, gosh, it does feel pretty tacky. Maybe I wanna do a little more setting because I feel like that's not gonna wear well on me all day. I think perhaps it was the wearing of the two primers that kind of set me over the edge. I'm gonna grab about my e.l.f. camo powder foundation and I'm going to use this really lightly okay because I realize I already have foundation on. I have this in light 210 in and I'm going to just, I know how soft this is, just get a little on my brush and just do a little buffing to help kind of set my skin. I won't do the under eye area with this but just the rest of the face that I don't always set but Feeling the need today. We still have kind of a glow, kind of a sheen to the skin. Man, I applied hardly any. That didn't do much. Okay, we'll just go with it. For my next step, I'm going to bronze, and I'm going to use a semi-new item that you already saw me use recently, but I'm giving it another shot. I wasn't, like, blown away, but it's the Luminous Putty Primer. So we had Putty Primer. Now this is Luminous, although I don't think it looks that luminous. And I have it in Seaside Shimmer. The other day I was playing with this, and I got a little on my finger and I just went like this. And I thought it kind of looked nice. <laughs> like I just buffed it in with my fingers, but it, it took a little while. So I might go ahead and still bring in the brush. I use my Sephora 56 and we're just gonna buff it in. Now streaking this product on your skin will give you a little more color, like going straight to the skin like this as though it was coming straight off of a stick because this shade just the nature of this particular shade, it's not super dark. So you can get a little more color intensity if you swipe it on with your finger and then blend. I'm kind of sore right here because I dropped my laptop on my face. 
last week. I was getting done editing and I was standing up and I was like, for some reason, this heavy old MacBook Pro. Why did I do this? I stood up and I was holding it like in my hand up here. It was open and I was just like getting up from my chair and I was getting ready to put it where I normally keep it. And I reached up like this and it just slipped out of my hand and it hit me right here, right there. Every time I contour now, I feel it. Definitely one of those, why did I do that moments? This isn't looking so bad, is it? I mean, it doesn't hurt to have a little subtle contour. It's definitely a different story from my refi cream contour in tan. That's okay. I think it looks good. I think it looks realistic. It's not exactly doing the luminous thing. I'm just saying it doesn't really look super glowy or anything. You can maybe see a little bit of it if you look at it in the, in the pan, in the container, once it shears out on the skin. I've got everything right out to the edge today. As I use a product, I'm like sitting it out so I don't forget about it. Okay, that's enough. And then I'm gonna pull in a putty blush. I feel like Elf's really trying to make putty the thing. Where did the Bite Size Face Duos go in Ulta? And if I look for Bite Size Face Duos on their website, you can find the Bite Size Face Duos on Elf's website. Oh, for $4. I thought they were $3. Okay, $4. But why did they take them off of Ulta's website? Why did they do that? But I'm using one of these luminous putty blushes. This is the shade called Maui. Soft, rosy shade here. See, I see some glow when I use this. I got like three of these when they first came out and I felt like I hadn't maybe used this one as much, but it does show some pretty glow. And I'm just using a Sephora 56 again. This is just my short handled one. It's cute. Okay, so it's light. It is a softer shade, but I'm seeing it. Not quite ready to stop putting it on yet. And amazingly, like the skin is not really too tacky feeling anymore. Even after putting two cream products on back to back, things are still looking good here, I feel. I don't even feel like I really want to highlight. Like the, the glow on the skin is nice. I, I like it how it is. So there's the complexion, gang. The skin has been well prepped. We used that foundation, which I really liked. Um, the color corrector was okay, but not maybe something I'd feel like I even needed to use every day. But it did do some of the work. And then that lighter concealer came on and looked really good on the surface of the skin. I'm talking about this Flawless Brightening Concealer, the Click Pen. That did pretty good. Now I'm using my Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. You guys have seen me use this one quite a bit in the Cool Brown shade. So I like this. I like the thicker one too. Instant Lift. Gosh, some names have just been escaping me today. Like I was trying to think of the name for Vanny Cream earlier and I was like, what is this? Gonna cut myself some slack, it is 5 a.m. We are loving the new bed. Sleep number, oh, digging it. For the first time in his life, Bub has had a bed long enough for his entire body to fit on it. It's a California king. Bub is 6'6", by the way, so. I'm five feet tall, so I've got all kinds of extra bed space to share with the kittens. It's also supposed to have some kind of cooling technology. I kind of sense that as well. I feel like that works. I've just been very comfortable. I'm a pretty good sleeper though. Like I, I'm dog tired when I get in that bed. I remember my mom telling this when like Belle was little and you're going through those phases where, you know, you're feeding them in the night and you're up constantly and blah, blah, blah. And she was talking about how you could just fall asleep sitting up practically, like just prop you up against something and fall asleep. And that's the truth. Like that's mom tired. So yeah, I still, even though I'm not like constantly up in the night with anyone, which is great, yay for that. I still go to sleep very, very tired, very worn out feeling. Wow brow, deep brown. I'm just gonna use this to set if I can. I don't know, there's hardly any left in this. This is nice on its own. Um, this is, you know, gives you glossier boy brow vibes. It has a little fibers, adds thickness and some color to your brows. But I didn't have like another e.l.f. brow mascara type deal, so I'm just using this. There is some. Okay, good brow, good brow. We're gonna bounce over to Milani actually and just use good old Milani eyeshadow primer. And yeah, I feel like e.l.f. hasn't put out anything major like eyeshadow wise lately, so I'm just gonna use one of the bite size quads that I feel like I haven't used in a while. By the way, let's see like what happens when we just search eyeshadow. What's currently available? Um, they do have some shadow sticks and some no budge cream shadows. I do have one of those no budge cream shadows in sand dune. That was pretty. They are still selling on e.l.f.'s website some of the $10 like 
like skinny eyeshadow palettes, Mad for Matte, which was great. They've got the new classics still on there. They've got the 18 hit wonders, the colorful one. The new classics was nice, $14 palette there. And these little guys are still selling for $3, okay? Still selling for three on the bite size eyeshadows. And I'm gonna use the rose water one, which looks like this, and I just haven't used it in some time. And I've been loving my Persona Double Ended brush here. This fuller brush to like get color in the crease. I'm gonna use that little matte guy right there. Little matte, like mauvey, mauvey gray. But I like this size because it utilizes more of my space in my crease and beyond. And I think I get some like really nicely blended, nicely like faded out looks with this. So I'm just getting some of this shade put down. It's pretty light, but kind of buildable. Can you see it? Then we kind of have no choice with this squad. If we want more darkness, we've got to go down here to this kind of plummy looking shade. And I'm using the other end of my brush, the flatter end. I say flatter because it still has a little fluff and we just start patting that on. I think in the past I haven't loved this because I felt like this shade was kind of on its own, you know, for darkness. And I think maybe I could have done with just one of the shimmers and maybe some shade that fell in between this and this to make it feel a little more natural to use, but we're going to go with it. It is a pretty color. It's kind of a cool purple, honestly. Deep plum. My girls will literally be in purple lipstick, deep purple lipstick that uh, matches their uniforms on competition day. It's gonna be wild. They're gonna be in more intense makeup than I'm in. <laughs> okay, so I'm just kind of like dabbing in, trying to make sure it's all even, adding in little bits and pieces more of this, getting it up into the crease. Buffing over the edge with the fluffy side. I may add a little bit more of my lighter matte now and help that just blend everything. That looks pretty smooth. This is the technique. Put it on first, start getting the darkness on, and then come back with it. Then it really looks nice. Okay. I figured you out. Okay, then I'm going to clean off that end of the brush where I use the dark shade and we're gonna bring in some shimmer. I'm gonna start with this one right here. That looks extra rosy, I guess. Hit the middle of the lid with that. See that, nicely pigmented. Yeah, I like these little bite-sized quads. I think you just kinda of gotta find the color pairing that works for you and makes sense for you in application. I actually really love the all matte one. Okay, this one here now, this shade. All right, bring in the brightness on the inner corner. Let's get in focus. And you know, the brush wants to let it come up above the crease, and I kind of like that too. It's a little frosty, but I don't hate it. I did all of that with one eyeshadow brush, by the way. That Persona brush is worth it, but I am gonna pull in the one that's labeled Smudge and Define, and I'm using the little Define side, which is like a small pencil brush, and I'm gonna use a little bit of that on my lower lash line. This is also good for like a light inner corner if you want that. But I'm just getting a little bit of that there. And I think I might put some since it's so good about pinpointing that color, put a little bit on the upper lash line too, just concentrating that dark shade like liner. Okay, there we are. There's the rose water quad in action, guys. And then we have a new mascara and new lip products. Um, this is the e.l.f. Lash and Roll, and I guess this is their take on like a Benefit Roller Lash. Here's the thing, I had to get it in the deep brown. Yeah, I had to get deep brown because that was all that was available and I really wanted to try it. So that's okay. It'll still be nice and dark, I'm sure. I'm gonna curl my lashes. You know what I'm craving right now? Chinese food. Like some good old sweet and sour chicken or something. Cashew chicken, maybe. I've been trying to eat so healthy. I followed the Macy Blackwell idea, which I've done this before as well, where you just like keep a veggie tray in your fridge. I'll make my own veggie trays. So if you get a Rubbermaid party platter off Amazon, like that's the way to go. You fill it with your own stuff and then there's a little dip container and just keep that handy. So when you want a snack, you get that and it's good. 
I like my veggies and the girls like it too. If you present them veggies on a party platter, they're all about them. Okay, so what I'm seeing here, I can definitely tell that it's dark brown and not black, but I'm seeing definition and I'm feeling like it's supporting the curl that was enforced by the lash curler. This is my first time using it. So sometimes me and mascaras don't always get along right at the start, but with coat number two, I am seeing a little more thickness. And again, the appearance of the, the curl is staying. And it's been a while since I've used Benefit Roller Lash, but I am pretty sure that's known to be a more defining mascara. And that just seems like what this is here. But you can kind of tell like when certain heavy mascaras get on the lashes, you can tell that they are on contact, almost undoing your curl, if you're curl challenged like I am. And so this one just does not give me that feeling. I think it's gonna do well with curl holding. It's got a little bit of curve there, some really short rubbery bristles. I like a brush that I can manage easily. Look at me flipping my wrist. I think something to know about this is that the brush is gonna come out very cleaned off, okay? So if you want more intensity, you're gonna to have to build with the coats. It's designed to be defining. I do think it's lengthening, but you're gonna to have to spend a little time with it. And like I've said before, you don't like having to spend too much time if your lashes don't like to curl because sometimes just the act of raking through them will pull them down a little bit. Here's what's happening now. I mean, honestly, pretty good length. I'm still working on this eye. More coats, more length. I'm not mad at this mascara. I just think it takes a little time if you're looking for a bigger lash look. I'm not gonna put it on my lower lashes. I'm going to put Callie Ray there. I know this won't smudge. I don't feel like taking any risks. Oh, I got the new CeraVe, CeraVe eye makeup remover. What's it called? Comforting eye makeup remover. I just wanna be comforted. When I take off my eye makeup, I don't want to like over dry or anything. And I do really like the Lancome one, but it would be cool to find a good one at a lower price too. So I thought I'd try that out. I haven't used it yet, but I just got it. All right, there we go. I could also go for a warm Sonic pretzel twist right now. Here's what I'm gonna do at this point in time. I'm gonna take my Kosas Cloud set. I know it's not e.l.f., but I'm gonna put it in my little place where I like to put it. <laughs> It just makes everything look nice and smooth. What can I say? And we're gonna play with these two new lip colors I got. I got the O Face Satin Lipsticks. I chose two shades. I got Standing Ovation and Shameless, just so I could sing. It's out of my hands, I'm shameless. Who doesn't love a little Garth in the morning? Standing Ovation first. Let's, we're gonna try them both on. First time going across the lips. I uh, swatch these on my hand. Smell great, lightly sweet. I feel like I got a funky look there. Pretty shade. Fully opaque color, one swipe, nice and smooth. I'm checking back on what the price was on these. I mean, it's what I expect a cream formula lipstick should be. These are $9, okay. Definitely the most expensive lipstick I've ever bought from e.l.f. Comfortable high pigment color in just one swipe. Rich satiny finish, nourishing formula with marula oil, squalane, and jojoba delivers the ultimate and long lasting comfort. Okay, so that's a pretty shade. It's kind of like a warm, sort of rich pink. That's pretty. I don't love it paired with like this eye, but we're just trying on, right? Oh, and magnetic closure. Mm, I do love a magnetic closure. Is it worth $9? I don't know. All right, let's try on Shameless. Let's see if we can fall in love with this shade. Cooler, maybe a little deeper than the last one. Oh. This shade I love. And none of us will ever forget what the shade name is because we'll think, I'm Shameless! For some reason, I'm having trouble staying inside the lines with it, but man, it looks pretty. I feel like it kind of filled in some lines. It is a luxurious feeling lipstick. It reminds me of Bite lipsticks. Honestly, that's the feel. Anybody else think that who's tried one of these? Does it remind you of a Bite lipstick? Nicely pigmented, full color, comfortable. Magnetic closure. I mean, it's good. I'm, I'm liking that. I, I would try more shades in that, I would. So shameless, we're talking cooler, Pink, deeper pink, kind of like berry. A little bit of the shades trying to stand outside the fire. 
And I've got friends in low places over here too. Okay, here's the look. I think it needs a little more blush. Luminous putty. What happens if we just do this? Like a lightweight amount of pressure. This is what I was doing when I was playing with that bronzer the other day. I was just like, what if we didn't press hard onto the skin and just worked it like a little buff on the floor kind of thing. As I build up the blush, though, I feel like I'm getting more luminosity, but not maybe still a ton of color intensity. And it might be the lightness of this shade that's doing that because there are some other colors you can choose, but. All right, here's the overall look. What do we think? What about the new stuff? Um, this, I think I'm gonna add this into my nighttime skincare routine. This I'll keep, you know, playing with. Put this right in here now with my sunscreen. Oh, and see what they're doing? They're taking super goop colors because this perfectly matches my super goop that's already in the drawer. But I like that they had some glow to it. You know, that was nice. Kind of differentiates it from just any old sunscreen. And as you put it on your skin, you don't have like a white cast. Instead, you have a nice, like healthy glow. Could look really pretty on its own. Like, oh, I'm just going out to the pool, not wearing any makeup. I want a sunscreen that's gonna make my skin look good. That's nice. And what was the SPF level on that? Uh, uh, 30. Okay. Whoa glow, they call it. The Power Grip Primer with the 4% niacinamide, I think may be slightly smoother than the original, but I'm going to keep playing with that. The mascara is good. It's not blowing my mind, but I think actually it could be pretty good for my lash type, which is Curl Challenged. And I do like these lipsticks. I think they feel really nice and they do totally remind me of Bite. They're not the type of thing that's gonna feel real goopy on your lips or anything. They're not a shiny cream. They are kind of like a satiny finish there. I like them and I would try more of them. But a couple of real satisfying moments for me in this video was the rediscovery of this. This foundation from e.l.f. I thought actually went on beautifully. Looks really nice, made a nice base for the look. Rediscovering that and rediscovering this and seeing that like, yeah, if you just play around, with the way you layer up those colors. It can look very blended and very complete, that rose water quad. This also, not so bad. <laughs> um, I think part of it was layering up with the color corrector, which may not be necessary for me on a daily basis, uh, but I do think it's doing its job. But layering the lighter one over that, it worked and I feel great in this area and it doesn't look too heavy, none of it. So thank you all very much for watching. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I feel like it's been a while since we've done a whole elf face like this. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if there are any other lipstick colors I should try or just anything else you've got your eye on. And I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.